I just want to meet some ancient dinosaur-eating creatures, alright? Don't you? As cool as a lot of these still living underwater beasts are, there's a special allure to the gigantic ones from days gone by. Nothing seems to grow as big as it used to, save for whales maybe, and I think that's kind of sad. I want news snippets letting us know that a small fishing boat was taken down by a humongous subaquatic predator. I want Jaws to really happen, but instead of a shark, it's a different, ancient, sharp-toothed being. Maybe that's just a psychopath in me, but hey, you can't deny the cool factor at play. Hello fellow friends and philosophers, and welcome back to the most mind-bending channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your voice in the void, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be discussing a creature that I really wish was still around. That's right, we're asking what if the Tylosaurus didn't go extinct? So grab your harpoon gun and maybe bring a few other sea creatures along as bait because we are diving down below the waves and taking a look at an apex predator. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more massive munchers. Outrageous. Let's begin. Before we can wrestle with the implications of bringing this creature into the modern age, we should probably get a general idea of what it was like. And what better place to start than with the name? Tylosaurus was identified and named during a period of time in which two researchers were constantly battling with each other. Because of this, the exact reasoning behind the name has been lost in time, but we do know that it's also known as a knob lizard. What a name, right? This long and deadly fellow is a mosasaur, with brethren in the modern monitor lizards and snakes. Dominant during the late Cretaceous period, the Tylosaurus is considered THE predator of the seas of the time, much like how the T-Rex was THE land predator of its time. These monsters could grow up to 15 meters long, complete with muscular, vertically flattened tails to assist in moving extremely quickly through the water. While large when viewed from the side, they had a very slender profile from the front, making them much more hydrodynamic and as such, better hunters. By using their tail to accelerate quickly and their paddle-like limbs to steer, there weren't many creatures the Tylosaurus couldn't sneak up on and devour. They had a long, cylindrical snout with plenty of pointy, cone-shaped teeth. This snout would be used to locate prey, and once said prey was in their jaws, it would be swallowed whole. Now, the Tylosaurus didn't take any chances with its food. It had not one, but two extra rows of teeth on the roof of its mouth to ensure that its victims stayed snagged. No swimming away from that. Another technique used to ensure the docility of prey was one that required the use of the previously mentioned muscular tail. If you look closely at the snout, you'll notice that the front is largely toothless and seemingly reinforced. The Tylosaurus would propel itself from below and ram into its intended prey, stunning it. Once the prey was incapacitated by this blindside smash, the predatory Mosasaur would then gulp it down, no problem. Delicious. All this talk of prey must be getting you pretty curious, huh? So what did the Tylosaurus eat? Well, the real question should be, what didn't it eat? This thing primarily dined on fish, but was not too picky. Remains of seabirds, sharks, plesiosaurs, and other mosasaurs had been found in the stomachs of Tylosaurus, meaning that it likely took what it could get. Some think that most of the meals it enjoyed that weren't fish were sort of accidental, like if a land-based dinosaur drowned and was found by the underwater beast. The sharks and other mosasaurs weren't primetime prey either. It's likely that Tylosaurus would target these other predators in order to remove competition from their hunting grounds. You can't have too many predators in one area, it just doesn't work like that. So in addition to eating just about anything, they were also ruthless, ensuring that their space was just that, theirs. Speaking of their space, these lengthy lizard lads lived largely around the western interior seaway, which is around the central portion of the US and Canada these days. So if they didn't go extinct, then they would have to find a new place to call home. But how cool would it be if they were just chilling in some of the more densely populated western areas? Now that we've got the rundown on Tylosaurus, we can return to the original question. What if it didn't go extinct? First of all, it would totally change the underwater food chain. Being 15 meters long, quick, and willing to eat almost anything, it's likely that the Tylosaurus would take over at the top. Sharks would battle valiantly, but it's hard to imagine many fanged fishies taking down the Tylosaurus. So we'd see some differences in apex predator rankings, and even potentially see some species go extinct, either being hunted down to nothing, or being out-hunted and starving. It's a fish-eat-fish -fish world out there, folks. Brutal. Speaking of usurping sharks, we'd definitely dedicate a whole week to these scary mother truckers. Shark week who? We're into Tylosaurus time period now. I know it's not as snappy, but come on, how cool would it be to have folks make all sorts of TV shows about these monsters? I'd watch it for sure, and if you wouldn't, you're lying. Of course, getting attention at the same level as Shark Week leads to other things too. Tylosaurus toys would be made, Tylosaurus toddler t-shirts, all sorts of merchandise would be on its way to market, because that's just what we do. The shark's time in the sun is over now, long live the Tylo. I could even see a tune akin to Baby Shark becoming a worldwide phenomenon. Somebody would just have to come up with a cool nickname for the Tylosaurus to make it catchier. Who remembers Left Shark from the Super Bowl? 
we could have left Tylosaurus instead. Maybe I'm taking this idea too far, but if this beast did exist today, you can bet people would be going nuts for it. It is too cool to deny. Maybe too cool for its own good. Just like how many sharks are endangered, it is very possible that the Tylosaurus could suffer from the same fate. Being hunted for specific body parts, getting snagged in fishing nets, having prey overfished by people, and going hungry. That's the problem with being a large predator in the same era as humans. Humans tend to mess everything up for you. At that point, it's sink or swim, hunt or be hunted. Maybe the Tylosaurus could develop some traits that would make it a true apex predator. Maybe it ascends from the water and exacts revenge on humanity. Or maybe it just chills and accepts its fate, just like everything else. Who knows? So, what do you think? What would happen if the Tylosaurus didn't go extinct? Would it have made it to the current day without evolving? Would it have to compete with humans for food? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of the more tricky ones from Should We Be Afraid of 5G Networks? SCP-049 says, if it's new, then humans are most likely to be scaredy of. That's just the human condition, eh? Survival instincts at their most base. I just think that more people would have learned by now. Drino Christo says, I thought that the thumbnail was a giant Shrek head. Well, you believe what you want to believe. If a giant ogre dome would make you happy, I'd say run with it. Fox Jake says, what if there was a sign of artificial intelligence and machines rise above and we're in a never ending battle between man and technology? All I'm saying is I've seen the Terminator a few times. I'm ready for Skynet. Bum Assassin says, hello. Hello to you too, Bum Assassin. And Aki Lefty says, what? Exactly. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I run down to the Riptide, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more ancient apparatuses. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.